Washington's Clear Thinking Headquarters. The Morning Majority, 5 to 9 on 630 WMAS. 837, Morning Majority, Brian Eman, Mary Catherine Hamm from The Daily Caller in this morning. And in studio now, Joe Wurzelbacher, a.k.a. Joe the Plumber. What's up, man? Oh, man, just happy to be here, brother. Living the dream. <laughs> happy to be in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Don't tell too many people. Do you like it here in D.C.? Uh, no. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> That's fine. Be honest. But why, what's the problem with D.C.? Uh, I, man, I just believe the you know the Republicans and Democrats alike made a mockery out of uh, what is Washington D.C. You know the whole idea behind Washington D.C. Uh, so it just disgusts me to be here. What do you think of the government shutdown? Should, they, should the Republicans hold firm and try and shut it down unless they get their sixty-one billion dollars worth of cuts, or should their compromise be made? Did you ever hear uh, what true intelligence is? No. Uh, true intelligence. Not this room. I can say that. <laughs> Which, uh, well, to answer your question, a true intelligence is to be able to make decisions and be able to look down the road a year, two years, three years, and see what kind of, uh, you know, what's going to happen making the decisions now. Um, you know, we need to fix the budget. You know, the Republicans and Democrats are looking at, okay, how do I get reelected, but, you know, not cut here, not cut there. You know, they're thinking very short term. It's going to hurt the, um, uh, the government. It's going to hurt the American people. And so, uh, I mean, this needs to be fixed. We can't keep kicking it down the road. So if the Republicans dig in and do what needs to be done, well, they're going to be highly unpopular and might not get reelected uh, to the detriment of, and not that I'm saying the Republicans are the savior of, of America, but, you know, these decisions have to be made. The Democrats don't want to make them because they want uh, ultimately the American people to you know, depend on them and you know here here's some more money and and here's some more health care and here's some more of this you know eventually it, it's going to bleed us dry so um, like I said I hate saying good things about Republicans but they need to dig in and they need to do what's right for once why do you hate saying not good things about Republicans because they don't really do a lot of good things uh, you know they're they're like to the Democrats I, I lump both sets together um, ultimately they're not for the American people they're there for their for their parties they're not for America and there's a big difference there you can Came onto the scene in 2008 with the infamous um, spread the wealth around mm-hmm. comment from President Obama or famous, however you want to, want, want to look at it. Um, did you ever think, I mean, how has it affected your life, especially in the last four years? Well, hell, Three brother. years, I guess it is now. I'm here. I mean, normally, if I was just a plumber back in Toledo again, you wouldn't want to talk to me. Um, that's how it's changed. A lot of people call me up, want me to do interviews, like travel around the country, um, kicking people in the butts, tell them to get educated, make good decisions, stop just voting party lines. Um, you know, I seem to have a voice. People listen. It, it resonates. I'm not politically correct, and a lot of people like that. You know, I speak my mind, and I don't make my own apologies. So, uh, yeah, it's just given me a platform to help, uh, hopefully, encourage Americans to step up and do their damn jobs. Do you think it's and ultimately was a good thing for you? I mean, it's push push you in a new direction for sure. You look back on it and say, hey, that was a blessing, or no, God, brother man, I, listen, I, I love plumbing. I love building things with my hands. I, I like, uh, you know, after I get off work, that's it, nothing more. I, you know, I go fishing, I go toss football with my son. I you know, go shooting. I, I do those things, and it's a lot of fun. Now, you know, I find myself in front of a Mac computer 18 hours a day reading news, and it's one of those addictions that you can't get away from, and it, it sucks. I hate it. It's true. It's, it's, like, it's like Matrix. Once you take the pill, you're in. Oh, yeah. You have to keep reading. But, so, looking forward, you know, you did some traveling during 2010. What happens in 2012? Are you, are you part of the conversation? Um, it just depends on who gets in the race. I mean, you got Herman Cain out there, who I, I really do like a lot. He's always been very uh, uh, respectful to me, very honest, and didn't try to use me like uh, I found uh, a lot of people did. You know, I like Sarah Palin. I'm not afraid to say that. A lot of people want to make that a, a bad thing or some kind of cuckoo deal. But, you know, I think she's a good woman. Her and Todd Palin are good people. I've met them. I've talked with them many a times. So, uh, now, just about anybody else out there on that field, the other 15 candidates that are running, I wouldn't wait my breath on him. Really? Did, did you feel you got used by McCain? Well, not so much, well, not so much as used, but he wanted to use the idea of Joe the Plumber, middle class America. Um, you know, he wasn't doing it because he really wanted to fight for me. He, he was doing it to try to get votes. So let's, you know, keep it real and not uh, sit there and say, well, he was for Joe Wurzelbacher. No, he, he, he was for John McCain using Joe Wurzelbacher to get votes. Right, but did you did you realize that going in, or was that something that you oh, yeah. while you were there? Yeah, no, I'm not stupid. I mean, it was obvious, but I mean, you know, you had two choices. You had a bad one and a worse one. I mean, what do you do? 
Yeah, well, or you can just say, I'm not going to go with either one of them. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's your responsibility as an American to vote. You know, if you've got bad candidates, that's our fault. It's, uh, you know, people are going to manipulate the situation whatever they can, and politicians are masters at it. But it sounds like your message is, and I don't disagree with it one bit, is that it's the system that's really broken more than anything else. Not necessarily the people, but the way the way we have this political machine set up where we have Republicans and Democrats and doing what they can do to keep themselves in power and to keep keep that machine running, not necessarily the American country. You know, my message, uh, it's not so much the system, to be honest with you, it, it is the American people. Um, it, it's branding and messaging. If you can get out there, have enough money, spend enough money, you can believe, you can make people believe poop sandwiches are good to eat. I mean, I honestly believe that. It's just all that branding and messaging. What I blame is the American people. We don't talk about individual responsibility. We don't talk about accountability. Those are just, you know, uh, punchlines, if you will, anymore. A true education, I don't mean left and right i mean give me the facts let me the american make my own decision uh too many people are wrapped up in their lives and don't realize how badly that their local you know, state and federal government affects their lives so it's, it comes down to education civic responsibility uh you know a lot of bad words people don't like you know i say civic responsibility people think jury duty and i know i mean it, it means and, and, and entails a whole lot more than just jury duty for the record the poop sandwiches are a huge part of obamacare <laughs> as a plan they were part they're in there you just have to find them. Um, <laughs> if you could get my son to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I'd be happy. You'd be okay with that. Um, <laughs> well, tell us about what you're working on now. I think you've got a show on the web-based TV channel, Right Network. Tell us about that. Two things I'm working on. I'm working on a show, and I have a veterans organization. The show is called uh, What Do You Know Joe? And the, the tagline on it is it's not about right and left. It's about thinking for your own damn self. You know, we uh, do some skits, make it funny, encourage people to watch it. Then we hit them with seven to ten minutes of hard facts. And uh, then we ask the American people to make the decision. You know, it's it's uh, you know we're all adults here. There's no such thing as fair. It's about right and wrong. Is it is it is it, is it good for America to drill or not drill? Is it good for illegal immigration to continue uh, unabated? Um, I mean, these are just simple questions, and it's not colored by the left's point of view or the right's point of view. Just you know, make up your opinion. Should we keep allowing legals to come in this country? Last year it costed America 113 billion dollars, uh, and that's not to fix illegal immigration. That's that's providing schools for them. That's providing health care. $113 billion. You know, we can't even cut $60 billion out of our budget, yet we're spending $113 billion on illegal immigration. So, you know, we, we put that kind of information out there. It's, it's not colored, you know, um, and that's the point. point. We've got to pull the political rhetoric out of the issues and get back to the issue. Is it going to hurt America? Is it going to help America? You look like you're a plumber. You look like you're in construction. I know that's stereotypical, but when you came in here, I was like, man, big shoulders, big strong guy. I mean, you look like you've been working on the construction field. Don't look like a politician, that's for sure. Brother, I chop wood probably about two, three hours a day just to get out my frustration with the people. You know, because it's politically incorrect just to hit somebody anymore. I, I actually have a, I have a pressing question. I don't know if you saw a couple of weeks ago that uh, Rand, 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 Rand Paul had quite a rant about his toilets and the fact that they were not flushing properly. What is the science behind that as somebody who knows these issues you know there is actually most people don't realize that there is a science behind the toilets and how they make them and how many rotations right. the water yeah. goes down and so on and so forth when they first came out with the uh, uh, you know low consumption toilets um, you know the federal government pushed it on the American people and, the, and it wasn't ready I mean we had a lot of issues with them for the first three four five years now since then they've actually come around and um, they're good toilets I mean they they work pretty well uh, three gallons still flushes better than 1.5 gallon though I mean, you're not going to get an argument from me. Most plumbers have, you know, stockpiled those three-gallon toilets somewhere. So when they build their homes, they have them. The uh, black market for toilets. Uh, there is actually. You can go to Canada and get them. So, um, but um, you know, no, they work fine. Usually his problem. You know, it sounds like his problem. Maybe his vent line was backed up a little bit. Maybe he got one of those bad early models. <laughs> That's a possibility. <laughs> bad water flow. All right, Joe. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. Oh, hey, my pleasure, guys. And uh, the website you can check him out. Rightnetwork.com. Joe Wurzelbacher, aka Joe the Plumber, here in the morning. 845 on WML, traffic and weather together with Jamie Witten.